Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. In this tutorial we're looking at two functions related to the if function sumif and countif. And these two functions are very useful when it comes to summarizing and analyzing tables of data. You can see here and it's a very common thing to have a list of items that are in no particular order except in the sale code order. Now, for example, if I wanted to see all the tickets that had been sold by a particular seller, I could sort the list and maybe use subtotaling or manually click and drag to select and look at my summary table down below. But that's not always practical or convenient and it takes time and it'd be nice if there was another way to do it. And with countif and sumif, there is another way to do it. So. Let's scroll back down to the bottom and bring up the table that I'm going to complete with the functions. And we have the names of our sales team. I want to calculate the number of sales for each person. I want to see the ticket quantity that they sold and the total revenue generated. And the final column is just a simple calculation to work out the average price of each ticket sold. Before I create the calculations, I'm going to split the spreadsheet. So I'm going to click in the first column doesn't really matter where and go to the view tab and click the split button and then just click back on the home tab again so I can now move this split bar I'm sure you've seen it before if you saw my earlier lesson on creating tables and viewing tables and I'm going to have my table or my summary table at the bottom and in the top half I can see my data table Okay, so I'll click into cell C61, which is where I want the first function to be created. And I want to work out the number of sales that each salesperson has reported or achieved. As with any function or calculation in Excel, we press equals on the keyboard. And I'm going to type out the name of the function, which is count if, open parentheses, as with all functions. And you can see the Excel tip has appeared to tell me there's two parts of the function. It wants the range and then the criteria. So I'll select the range first and the range is the column of names in the table. So I'm going to scroll to the top of the list there, click in the first name, hold down the control and shift keys and then press the down arrow and that will select all the names in that column down to the final row there as you can see. I'm going to press the F4 key on the keyboard to make that cell reference absolute as I'll be copying the function down later on type a comma to separate the parts of the function and the criteria is simply the name of my salesperson there. So close the parentheses, press the enter key and we can see that that particular person has made 12 sales. Okay I'm going to do that one more time so type equals count if open parentheses the range this time I'm going to select from the bottom of the table and I'll click into the last name there hold down control and shift and this time press the up arrow key you'll notice that it's selected the column heading sold by which I do not want included so I release the control key keep the shift key held down and just modify the selection by pressing the down arrow once and that fixes that problem press F4 again to make it absolute type a comma click on the name of the salesperson Carol in this case close my bracket or parentheses if you prefer. Press enter and we can see that Carol made seven sales altogether. And I could continue going through the list and creating the functions but I'm going to do what you would normally do which is click on the last one I created, put the mouse pointer at the bottom right of the cell when you get the black cross, simply click and drag down and that will tell me what the rest of my sales team has achieved in terms of the number of sales. The next thing I want to calculate is the total ticket quantity sold by each person. And to calculate this, I'm going to use another function. If I type equals, this time I'm going to use sum if, open brackets again. And you'll see that sum if has three parts to it. First of all, we need to select the range, and that's the same as count if, so it's the range of names. Again, just click in the first name there, control shift down arrow to select all the names in the column. Press the F4 key to make absolute. Type a comma. Now we want the criteria. The criteria is the same as count if, it's the name. So we're looking in that list of names wherever John appears and we want to then look across to another column. The total number of tickets sold, which is column E. So I'm going to click at the bottom of column E, which is where that number 18 is. Hold down Control Shift, press the up arrow 
Again, it's included the column header. I can modify that by releasing control, keep shift held down and just press the down arrow once. Press the F4 key again to make that second range absolute. Close parentheses, press the enter key. Uh, we can see that John's total ticket quantity is 190. And of course, if any of the values change in the table, so if we look at this Godfather sale here, there's 12 tickets that John sold. Uh, maybe he'll say it was 15. We can update that. And you'll see that the ticket quantity summary updates as well on the table there. I'm going to create another summary function in the next column, total revenue. So let's click into that, type equals, again, sum if. I'm sure you're getting the hang of this by now. Open brackets, we need to select the range. It's going to be the same range again, the range of names is relevant to us. So control, shift, down arrow key this time, selects the range. F4, comma to separate the parts, select the name of the person. So that's the criteria that we want Excel to use when summing up the range. So type a comma again, and the range of this time is going to be my totals column. So here I'm at the bottom of the table, so I'm going to click at the bottom value, hold down control, shift, up arrow, Again, just modify that with shift and down arrow. Make it an absolute reference one more time. Close parentheses, press the enter key. And so there we see John's made us $732. And just to complete the table, if I click in the final column there, and we're going to type equals total revenue, divide that by the total ticket quantity, press the enter key, and we can see that the average ticket price that John's achieved is $3.79. And finally, just to complete the table, I'm going to select all three calculations there. And then I'm going to put the mouse pointer bottom right of the cell on the third column and just double click. And there we go. It runs all the formulas and functions down the table. And we can see what our sales team have done. So that's a really nice way of just summarizing the content in a table when it's not always convenient to sort and filter and keep doing that and reorganizing lists. Using COUNTIF and SUMIF is a great way of avoiding that problem and having a nice tidy summary table as you can see here. I hope you found something useful there that you can apply to the spreadsheets you're working on. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.